I'm hoping this is the one I'm looking at, the brand new one that I'm hoping CX350. to see. Yes, they got the CX350. That's it. Got announced yesterday. Yep. Hold on, let me just pet it. Oh, it's just <laughs> lovely. Yeah, there it is. Oh. It was fate that I signed up for this showcase event for four days before the CX350 was announced. Then I hoped and prayed, prayed that the new camera will be there. Luckily, there are five in the US and I got to somewhat test out one of them at the showcase. I'm not a fan of specs talking, so I'm gonna have Steve talk about the specs. Take it away, Steve. Uh, so this is a new camera and it's, um it's important because it's not a duplication of an existing camera. We generally bring cameras out for a reason. So this is um, effectively, it's the, the turbocharged version of the, maybe the 180. Um, it's a different imager, it's, it's cleaner, more sensitive. Again, that's a technology of you know, evolution. Um, optics are somewhat similar, but this is a bit wider. Uh, so a wider reach is kind of nice for something like here in the church, for example. Um, in terms of internal processing, again, it's a next generation of processing. So more functionality, there's more codecs. Uh, this one does HDR, so you have HLG hybrid log gamma as a record option, which is very important for doing spectacular, yeah, anything which is tough lighting like we have here. Dark set, very bright lights. Um, HDR gives you the ability to record effectively about 20 times as much signal content and without distortions and clipping. So that's important, that's in here. Um, also, the codec supports 10-bit recording, but like the EVA. The EVA recordings and this camera are rather similar. So you have 42 10-bit recordings up to 30p. There's HEVC, which is H.265. Uh, that does up to 4K at 60 frames per second at a relatively low bit rate. So that, again, is one of those things we couldn't do that a year ago, and here we are with the camera that does it. So more tools for more jobs, more functionality, flexibility. You probably know, know, know more about the camera than I do in terms of the functionality and the button, things like that. But ND filters, two, four, six stops, autofocus assist, things like that. Um, recording on SD memory cards, same as the EVA. Um, please use good cards. Don't buy things you get from staples and things like that. They should be, otherwise you may have problems of intermittent recordings, but we warned you that in the manual. But um, basically, it's a, a rather nice camera. We're rather proud of it. And, uh, you know, that's the sort of thumbnail version of it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So I was told that there are only five in the U.S. And here's one of them right now. Again, I'm going to pet this thing because it's just <laughs> so beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, I'm back. The features that interest me the most are the zoom range, autofocus speed, uh, low light image quality, size and weight, and streaming capabilities. At the event, I met Rich. He's a stream idiot, and you should consider joining the Stream Idiot Facebook group. I did. Through Rich, I learned more about NDI, Network Device Interface, for streaming purposes, so I'll have him go through his notes and talk about what he thinks of the camera because both of us were looking at the Canon XF705 before the camcorder was announced. Take it away, Rich. Why are you looking at this camera in general? We're looking at this camera to upgrade from a 2K camera to a 4K camera. Mm -hmm. and, and what we need is something that is internet capable. Okay. And this is the first camera that has uh, NDI okay. that we know of uh, as far as um, being able to plug and play into the internet. But it's got NDI HX, which is why I'm here, is to ask why it doesn't have full NDI. I don't see anybody around here who's going to let us know yet, yeah. because this this event just started. Um, that's the main purpose is 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 the is the NDI or the uh, Ethernet output. Um, there's a couple other things that it's the second camera, other than my Canon uh, XF305s, that has a wide wide. Is it, which is a 24 millimeter close to that, mm -hmm. and a very good close up at 20 by uh, 20x. The Canon has a 25 by wide, which is which was considered one of the widest for its size, and it had a 20 by or 18 18x a zoom. The closest thing to this is going to be the um, oh gosh, the new Canon XF705. I mentioned which is, that. Yeah, which is what we were just about to purchase, but then realized that the um, Ethernet output, for it to work properly for NDI, uh, you have to have a whole new third-party computer that they that, that I forget which company sells, which is like $5,900. So it really is useless, that Ethernet output. 
which makes this camera a lot more worth uh, looking at. The thing is, this is the second camera that has this kind of stuff that we really need for live streaming of events. We do multiple camera live streaming, like five cameras. Um, this is almost there. All they need to do is add the Ethernet, um, sorry, the NDI full NDI output. And a couple little things that, that people complain about. The zoom rocker is too far forward, mm -hmm. which is a newer feature. Most of them are back here, so you can easily do this. So this is something I don't like. This is hard on the hands. It's kind of really difficult to do this if you're on a tripod. And you can't do this because it's way far forward. That's good for handheld, but terrible for on tripod. Mm -hmm. um, so that I need to ask them why they left that. Uh, a couple other things. The, the N NDI HX can only do up to 720. It's what I was told, not 1080. So that might be a big thing for some people that are doing sports, sporting events and things where they need a, a more resolution. So um, other than that, I think it's a great camera. And the price is really good. It's like $3,500 cheaper than the seven, uh, uh, XF705 which completely just throws the 705 out, out, of, the, uh, uh, out of the game. Okay, so so this is definitely to, worth looking at. Yeah. I'm back with the <laughs> Rich here. Perfecto. <laughs> like I said, I brought my AVX. We're going to test out the audio too, oh. brother. Oh. So I'm hoping that this card right here, and recording, and these HD XC, uh, SD oh, XC right. cards, two of them, are gonna record simultaneously and all that. And we figured out the zoom, so now we can zoom in uh, into the electronic zoom. Okay. And it is seamless from uh, from the manual glass zoom to okay. the electronic. It just keeps on zooming in. <laughs> Watch out! Really cool. Watch so, yeah, out! We don't have to click a button a or anything like Sony. That's right. Click a button, so digi you know, digi extender or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Check this out on the here. All right. Let's let's check this out. I can only zoom in to here, right there. Yeah. But with this and zoom here, let me just bring you, it a little bit brighter. That, with the zoom, then it, I just keep on going, it, and it keeps going, and going, so and going. Oh, that's it. <laughs> it's a little close. That's still really close. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty darn close. Yeah, yeah we got an extra yeah, almost like 15%, another, you know. $1, you know? <laughs> it, it, is, it is officially off the tripod now, and Rich, how does it feel? <laughs> It actually feels much lighter than I expected. Actually, and I want a copy of this, okay? So yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. get you a copy. This, the first thoughts is this feels much lighter. Um, the complaint about the handle, I think, is, is, is less of a complaint right now because it is balanced. If the handle was too far back like many other cameras are, it would be filled front heavy. Mm -hmm. And since it's a light camera, you have to have that handle in the middle because yeah. no matter what side you're going to be on, it's going to be too, it'll be too heavy one way or the other. But it feels good. Okay, back to me. While I was playing around with the camera, these are my impressions. But you have to keep in mind that this is not the fully baked firmware, so things could change. The image quality at 4K, 24 frames per second, 400 megabits per second looks great. I don't remember my settings because I did not get to have enough time to play until my heart's content, but the image in low light looks great and sounds great too because I put the AVX, the one I'm wearing right now, on the camera and tested the audio. But I cannot release the footage yet, hopefully soon, because the organizers there asked me not to release anything yet, but I can speak about it. The menu wasn't as intuitive as I hoped after watching the video posted on bnh.com. It took forever to find the settings for the record codec options. It wasn't placed in an intuitive selection. The shutter button didn't allow me to change the shutter speed. Instead, it was a preset shutter speed. I couldn't push it, adjust the shutter by spinning the dial that's close to the menu button. The three rings were good and bad. First of all, the rings are smooth as butter, baby. I mean, like, it's just smooth. Probably smoother than my baby's butt. No, I don't have a baby. I'll take that back. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. The focus ring was great, but it did not have hard stops. The iris ring, amazing. The zoom ring was a bit funky. There was lag when I spun the ring. However, due to it being an ES or engineer sample model, all the firmware was being tweaked before the gold model. So it's not fully baked yet. I'll let Rob explain what that all means. 
Take it away, Rob. So this uh, is an ES model. It's the final version of it yeah. prior to what they call the gold model, which the gold model is what actually goes into production and is released. Oh, okay. So the ES model is what they ship out to us so that we can go. Th so the way it is right now, um, the software may not be fully functional, but all of the buttons, all of the uh, functions within the footprint of the camera itself uh, are fully working. Okay, cool. So. And there are firmware updates coming up because there are yes, some things absolutely. that you guys there's, are still taking notes about. Yes, there's, there's a lot of things. Yet. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we, we actually went over. In fact, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was in New York and we, we had to sit down and kind of went over a lot of the uh, ideals uh, as well as the functionalities and feature set of it as it stands right now and where we had it, where the engineering sample was at. Um, there was a lot of feedback that was provided. Uh, there were some things that they said that they would already start working on so they will be coming in future releases. I uh, can't really say specifically which ones, uh, but I can tell you uh, that there are tons of things that are planned. Uh, there are lots of things that they're going to be adding into it uh, as far as being able to, and most of the stuff is obviously within uh, software within the camera, what the software can do, what availabilities you have, what the buttons can, can do, because all of those things can be changed. Uh, what control you have over the outputs, that kind of stuff. So uh, there may be may or may not be some other uh, functionalities that will be added as we go. So, uh, yeah, so keep, keep your eye out for those, those releases uh, because I have a feeling they're actually going to probably, uh, within the first six months or so, uh, probably looks like uh, there'll be two firmware updates within the first six months. Wow, I feel so lucky to be able to play with these toys that was um, here. And the, the new camcorder that just got announced, I got to play with and feel and touch and just push buttons and record. I'm not gonna release the sample footage because it is an ES model like Rob mentioned before. And ES stands for engineering sample. It is not a, a production camera that has been released to the public yet. So they are still working out the kinks that um, that is why it is being shipped out in February at the end of February so I'm very interested in seeing how this thing performs in the field because I, mean, I got to play with it it was very nice uh, it was not that heavy um, you know what the best part was though it's not even about the camera it's like meeting people who are genuinely happy about showing me the product and meeting people who are interested in seeing what the product can do as well and it's just about really today i would have to say it's about the community of people who came together today to you know try to figure out how to best serve their customers and customers giving feedback to camera companies to better improve their product so that pretty much it'll be a well-rounded product and not so much just it's just specifically meant for this and in a sense, you do have to kind of do that. But at the same time, you know, most people want an all-around camera. And I think that this camcorder, camera, shall we say, is, is going to serve that purpose. Um, I'm very excited to go back home and play the footage and see how that comes out because I'm just a geek like that. So, yeah, make sure if you buy this camera, use the links down below because the commission that I make and it costs you nothing extra will go towards my classroom. I love you. Thank you very much. Again, rock, paper, peace. See you in the next video.